Well, I know that you are just itching to know how it is that I got to this point. And I was just noticing this morning that uh, I've bent one of these little uh, braces down. But, you know, it's got to go down anyway, so there's, I don't need to bend it back out straight because, uh, you know, the more I flex it, the more chance there is I'm going to break it off and have to try and glue it back on. So we'll just leave it the way it is here. And, uh, yeah, well, like I said, you're probably wanting to know how did I get to this point. So let's roll the clock back about, oh, I'm guessing uh, 12 hours. And uh, have a look-see here. Well, what was it, about uh, four hours ago, we, we last used this thing, and uh, I took a shot with the Super Macro here just a few minutes ago, just to show you that the little uh, loop that we made is uh, completely filled up, and before I shorten this, because it's like, I was going to say three times too long, but maybe twice too long, I just want to see what will happen if the flame, when the flame hits it, is it going to melt this brass? Uh, now, do you remember when I did the, the photo etch annealing about three days ago and the photo etch railing burnt off? Well, there's two reasons why that happened. First of all, I, I wasn't supporting that thing correctly. I was supporting it, um, it was straight out and the weight of it just sort of slumped over. Secondly, I was going way too slow. I was applying way more heat than necessary. But anyway, let's, let's just see what's going to happen here. Is, is the end of this going to melt off or what? Okay, that should be more than enough to have melted that. Uh, I'm not going to put the super macro back on, but uh, I'll put the regular macro back on. And we should be able to see and I, I can quite well imagine that, that this little hole now is, uh, is clear. Um, yeah. Okay, I've, I've changed my mind. I am going to put the Super Macro on because <laughs> it's not much of a comparison, is it, if I, you know, have something that's five times closer. Okay, clearly you can see here now that uh, I don't think any of the metal deteriorated. All it did was it, it burnt out the, uh, yeah, it, it just burnt out the CA. So, that, so that's good. Okay, I think we make our little loop on the end of there. Now I was talking to somebody earlier and I was saying I wonder what the diameter of this wire is. So uh, let's just check it here. And we'll we'll do it in uh, thousands of an inch. Okay. What is that, 5.5? It's about the thickness of a human hair. I think it's about as tight as I can get it here. All right, let's get ourselves a little loop on the end here. Now, naturally, I'm not going to be using Andy's photo etch bender uh, to bend this, but I'm using it as a background. This brass makes a good background, generally speaking. Um, it even works when you've got brass on it, um, but mainly because of this little black dot that you can see here. If I can remember to keep everything over that dot, then I know I'm keeping it in the field of view. Because I'm going to try and bend this on, on camera, just for the fun of it. Now, actually, one of those 
is a little bit smaller than the other, so I was going to maybe I'll just reposition this in my hand so I can twist it. Okay, I think I can straighten that out here. Well, how does that look? It's uh, well. You know what? It's going to have to do. Okay. Now that we got this out of the way, let's get back to our plan. Okay. Now very carefully that I don't catch on these things. If you remember I wasn't going to bend them down until we actually have to bend them down, which is probably going to be pretty soon here. And uh, I'm going to use the extra thin. Yeah, I'll use the extra thin. I could probably just do it right now. I gotta be careful where I squeeze that I don't break these pulleys off here. Okay, our little dollar store clamp here. It doesn't have too much pressure down there. Just enough to hold it together while the extra thin evaporates out of that joint. And uh, it looks like we've got another one of these, this sort of thing to make here. Um, it, has only little, it looks like it has only two little angle brackets instead of three and then it will be going right there as you can see but that's going to have to be tomorrow folks so uh, yeah all being well we'll be seeing you in the morning Okay. These will probably now be more protected if they're tucked in a little bit. We'll uh, do the final positioning after we get it on the uh, mounted on the deck, because obviously these positioning pins go into holes that are somewhere on the on the deck. It almost wants to stand up by itself, but it won't. All right, let's uh, find a nice safe place to put this while we're looking for uh, what do we need here? We need number. Uh, B17, which is obviously this one right here. You can tell without uh, even looking at the numbers. And uh, B41, we need two of them. And that'll, that'll be these right here. Okay. 
Okay, I have uh, just sharpened and honed. Well, I guess that's sharpening too. My special cutter here, so we'll see if it pushes any easier. Try and get right up at the edge there. And we'll come in now from the other side. Kind of blocking the light, but I'm sure it's working. And as long as I'm holding the cutter in this angle, I may as well come in from this side. Now it looks like this platform here has something either coming up through it or being mounted down into it. Looks like the, as well as another one of these little rings that we have to mount something on. There's this one here. Well, I guess we'll find out, won't we? Okay, here we go. I'm going to get my hand in your way. Sorry about that. Now I'm noticing that these angle brackets are, uh, they do not have a right angle. Like, for instance, it, it does appear that maybe this, and like, like this, this angle here is 90 degrees, but it's not. It's off just a little bit. And uh, that means that when, when these are mounted, um, they, they have to be mounted in such a way Let's see here, how can I show you? Try and get it turned around here. I'm going to try not to touch this with my fingers, but I'm, it's not working out because... Okay, here we go. I think I got it now. Well, I had it and it pinged out of the tweezer. Okay, here we go. Now, these get mounted in, in, in the groove like that. Oh, by the way, I've, I've Windexed and... Uh, ultrasonic, uh, the, the uh, or whatever you call it, it's, it's what you might call pristine. You'll notice that this is textured here. So let me check the monitor. Maybe I bumped it out. Okay, you'll notice this is kind of, kind of textured. And at first I thought, well, if this is going to be the underside, we're going to, we're not going to see that texturing. But then I realized it, it was done, it was done that way so that the glue would, would have something to adhere to. Anyway, uh, what was I going to say here? Oh yeah, so anyway, I know I could, I could solder these in place, right? And there are people that would like me to do that. In fact, I think it was the day before yesterday, somebody actually made a video, and he said he made it specially for me. And uh, his name is Dave, and I think he calls his channel something like the train man or something like that and what he's he's into making uh large model trains and he may he makes parts for them and casts casts the wheels and stuff like that and that's his that's the sort of thing he likes to do but he made a a video especially for me because he was showing a, a type of soldering gun now the best way for me to describe it if you're not going to watch the the video is Picture a spot welder, and it works like that. It works like a spot welder. It's called a resistance soldering thing or something like that. Anyway, what I'm going to do, rather than try and tell you about it, is I'm going to put a link to that video, if I remember, and I'm going to put it in the uh, description in today's video. 
and you just click on it and it should take you right to that video where he talks about this uh, resistance uh, soldering system and uh, like I said it works like a spot welder in other words it it, it clamps on like there'd be two electrodes, one to go on each side of the of the metal. Well, here I go telling you about it. Why don't you just watch it for yourself, and uh, I'll quit poking here. Now, when we did up this platform here, we put the little angle brackets on the bottom first before we glued it onto the mast. But this one here, I'm not sure how far in it's going to go. I would I would think that in all likelihood this place that's been uh, textured is going to fit pretty much where it's supposed to go here. But uh, I'm going to put the platform on first and uh, now as you know I have difficulty talking and uh, let's just get everything lined up here. Okay, so we're going to want to pick it up. Let's do a dry run. And we're going to want to put it right on there. Okay, that should work. I'll hold, I'll hold it with my left hand. Put a little bit of glue on. Is any coming off? I say that every time, don't I? Okay, there I can see it up against the mast. Okay, let's get it on before it cures. Maybe I should, uh, I'm just going to get my fingers in your way there. I, th I think that's positioned right. I wonder if I was to turn it upside down and look from the bottom so that everybody can see here. Yeah, I, th I think that's square. I better quit messing around here before I wreck something. Okay, I'm guessing about 10 minutes has passed here now, and I'm pretty sure that that CA is strong enough that it can stand a little bit of stress. Now it's pretty clear which way these have to go on. And uh, I'm just doing a dry run here. Try and get these at the right angle so that I can quickly pick them up after I get the glue in the in the slot. Now when you're looking at it close like this you can see that I maybe didn't get this piece on perfectly square but I do believe it's it's glued on so that these holes that we see right here and here are not being blocked. Obviously something has to go in or out of them. Um, and we'll use our, our little applicator here. Uh, let's say we put on the macro lens. Did you notice how the uh, background came into sharp? I mean into focus. Um, yeah, when you stop it down like that, it's it stopped. It's you know, the closest it will, the, the smallest it will stop down uh, at this distance is f51. If I'm in as close as I can get, it'll go down to 57 for those of you who are camera buffs. And um, okay, let's uh, see what we can do here. And we'll try the the light. Well, as I mentioned before, uh, it could be that this is going to spoil it for you, but it should make the... Uh, uh, 
It's some better. Boy, that's bright though. Let's move this back a bit. Okay. Did I move you? Okay. Here we go. It could be that uh, this applicator is just a little bit too small. Okay. All right, we'll let that cure and then I'll reinforce it. Now straighten myself back out here Okay. That went better than I thought. Now I don't know how much time has passed here, but I imagine it's well over an hour. I think if I just reinforce from the inside Gotta be careful I don't break them off. Okay, now once that cures, it will, uh, it'll be fairly strong. Okay, we are finally at the starfish. Didn't I say about two days ago, maybe we'll be there by this evening or something to that effect? Well, I think we're finally there now. And, uh, okay, D23. Here it is right here, D23. But you know, we're gonna have to leave this for uh, tomorrow's episode. Uh, yeah, I might work on it a bit this evening, and once again, we'll add it to tomorrow's video if I do. In the meantime, thanks for watching everybody, and all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.